Okay, so let's tie this all together. You've been with us through the plant, and I think it was an extraordinarily exciting journey. To see the pride, the craftsmanship, the sophistication and strength that really is behind the story of Built for Tough. So why does it all come together as the 08 Super Duty? Well, it starts right here and what frankly is, well, never been an accusation of lacking for bold. For 08, just makes a stronger statement. But it's a case of form following function. Let me give you an example. Though the grill is much larger, which looks great, but it also helps feed those larger radiators we talked about. Remember, the cooling system is 33% larger overall. You need more air to make that useful, and to that end, that does the job. Now, this may be more about form, though I think there could be some function, and that, of course, they've now embossed Super Duty into the grill. Now, you say, where's the function? Well, <laughs> I think the function is that when you actually see this in your mirror, you're probably going to be inclined to move over a lane. So, that serves some function. Other key details, some more subtle than others. You've got this integrated step pad built in right to the top of the front bumper so that when the hood is up, it makes it easy for you to step up and check service items. I think that's pretty smart thinking. And you may have already caught on to the stacked headlights. That's a big change in this market because, frankly, it's not being done by anybody else. Ford decided it was time to bring the primary lighting system down lower. It would be less distracted to oncoming drivers, and so they decided to execute. Other key details, of course, monstrous and even stronger front tow hooks. And, of course, more inlet area down here as well. Now, real quickly, just to kind of go through to the key series, obviously, this is the 450. We're getting up into the big bad boy territory here. But I want to remind you, we got 250. That's available as a pickup only. We've got F-350. That, of course, is available as both a chassis cab and a pickup. And then, of course, the 550. And that thing's, that thing's basically just towing around small islands. And, of course, that comes as a chassis cab only. Now, of course, this is the front end, and that's what most people are going to see. But let me go ahead and introduce you to the working end of this truck as well. Of the litany of details we could address on this truck, you rather suspect that I wouldn't want to go into the cargo box. But you know what? I do because this end works pretty darn hard and Ford encourages you to do that. So flexibility and durability kind of go hand in hand here. Case in point, double wall construction. You know what, you bend the inside, it doesn't necessarily have to bend the outside. Of course, they paint and protect the entire thing against corrosion. They mount it with eight monstrous bolts. I mean, we are talking some big payload capacities. Keeping it attached to the truck seems like a logical conclusion to me. And, of course, these standard cap rails to protect the bed and, of course, it's finished. Now, a couple of other details. You know this thing's going to come in a 4x2 version. You know it's going to come in a 4x4 version to come standard with electronic shift on the fly. Now, the 4x4s at this level are a mono beam. They're a monster with huge control arms. Now, you've got a single rear wheel configuration, or in this case, as you can clearly see, you've got a double rear wheel uh, configuration that's available on 350, 450, and the 550 if you're really serious about the game. Now, changes for 08. They've added a full eight inches to the leaf spring in the front end. You're thinking, what's that about? I was curious as well. It actually improves the on-laden or on-loaded ride quality, and all of us are up for that. If you're going to ride in that cab, why not be comfortable when you're not carrying a load? Now. You know about the 350. The F-Series 450 now comes to market, and it really is the next logical step up in, in, in terms of capability, both in payload, conventional towing load, and the fifth-wheel trailer load. This is for somebody who wants to play hard. This really is Ford's toughest vehicle in the entire class. Now, it comes with a Class 4 hitch. It measures 2 and a half inches uh, in each dimension without the insert. That's, again, about stronger area of surface to really protect that trailer hitch. Now, tailgate. You wouldn't think so, but this is a lot of innovation right here in this immediate area. It has now available, of course, the uh, tailgate step. Uh, what a breakthrough. You're going to love that with its own handrail. And, of course, there is an available optional bed extender. Now, this one kind of breaks into a new area. It not only flips back to extend the tailgate or the bed area, but it actually will articulate and fold out of the way. So, literally, though you can remove it, probably not going to come up much. And, of course, Ford has been real big on making certain that their tailgates were lockable. And with this new step in here, probably a darn good idea. It also has standard tailgate assist. This thing would weigh 90 pounds if you didn't have it. And of course, it just makes it so much easier to use. Okay, let's talk about the office, or what I like to refer to as the luxury suite. You look at this one, you'll know why. There are different cab configurations. There is, of course, the regular cab, single door. There is a super cab, which is a door and a half. 
and then of course crew cab, which is two full-size doors. In terms of model lines, XL, XLT, Lariat, the all-new FX4, and of course the King Ranch package, which is just absolutely stunning. Now, talk a lot about innovation in this package. These new mirrors, which are power telescoping and power fold, work great, and bear in mind, they still are a breakaway mirror, very functional. You'll also see a styling cube being talked a lot about as it applies to the new Super Duty, and that, of course, is these fender vents, which I love. Not only because they do, in fact, vent some air, but more importantly, because of the way they're, they're marked. Case in point, this is red. That means it is the Power Stroke diesel. If these are satin black, they are the Triton gasoline engine family, so good stuff. Uh, new for 08 and applied to the 450 specifically is the new wider front axle. Now, obviously, that could be good for handling and really stability, but guess what? It's also improved the maneuverability, so the churning circle's actually gotten quite a bit tighter as applied to this vehicle. Okay, let's talk about transmissions in this particular chassis. There's a standard six-speed manual with a first gear that's pretty much used for towing buildings, I think, off their foundation. And, of course, a very popular automatic transmission referred to as a torque shift five-speed with overdrive. Now, there are features in this trans you should be aware of. It has a tow haul mode. It also has a thing called hill descent. I really like this feature. Literally, if you and your load are headed down a steep grade and you try to get after the brake pedal, it'll automatically downshift the transmission. I love that. Of course, it is available with a PTO. And I want to remind you, with this larger cooling system, you can run a power unit off of that trans and literally keep it running for hours and not overheat the engine. And in terms of serviceability, for those you've been around a while, you know that generally automatics require a lot of maintenance to pull their pans and get their filters out. This one has a spin-on oil filter. So it really is about servicing the market. Now, powertrains, let's discuss that real quickly. There is, of course, at the, uh, at the Triton gas engine level, a 5.4 liter V8, 300 horsepower, 365 pound-feet of torque. And because of the sophistication of that motor, the drivability really is excellent, given load variables. Of course, if you're a bit more serious about your towing, you may want to, in fact, look at the V10 engine. Very smooth, very torquey. Let me tell you the numbers. Of course, there's 362 horsepower in this 6.8 liter engine, and of course, 457 pound-feet of torque from a gas motor. And this thing is just about getting, well, real serious about the job. This is the all-new 6.4 liter twin turbocharged diesel engine called Power Stroke. I mean, the name itself puts the word power out there. But having said that, there are variations of this engine, and quite frankly, in its highest state of tune, 350 horsepower, and are you ready for this? 650 pound-feet of torque. This puppy's for getting the job done. Drivability and that power comes from two turbochargers. This huge intercooler on it. They really want to get that intake charge cooled down, and they've even cooled the fuel as well. Never even seen that before. For those who are really into these kind of components, it is, of course, a common rail fuel delivery. And what that allows them to do is deliver more fuel spurts, which help make the engine quieter, reduce its wear, improve its emissions, and, of course, increase the power. Now, the Pierzo uh, injectors are really key to why this thing's so quiet. They're buried very deep in the engine. They do make the thing so quiet, you can literally stand here with the engine running, and you carry on a conversation. Big, huge brake for you. Uh, they even have a... Uh, quiet steel applied to the oil pan so that, frankly, you don't get the bottom engine noise out of the thing. This is Ford's cleanest diesel ever. I mean, huge reduction in tailpipe emissions and a monstrous increase in total power, in part because of this new particulate filter that's part of this package. Literally sweeps that emissions right out of the exhaust system. It's self-cleaning. It's a burn-off system. Just a, just a huge gain. Now, just to give you a look at what this engine looks like when it's not sitting in this chassis, we're going to ask our good friend here from the uh, from the Kentucky truck plant to walk us out. Kevin Thomas, if you'd bring our engine out to us, thank you. I appreciate you trusting me with this thing, by the way. I know this is one of the models that your people work with, and again, thank you for all your help here. Really appreciate it. Well, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, don't panic, but you really needed to see what this monster of a motor is all about. And imagine something this big and this powerful being so quiet. Now, turbochargers do help make an engine quieter. These new injectors certainly help. The common rule common rail fuel delivery helps. I mean, the total execution in terms of sophistication and power are awesome. Okay, now let me show you the interiors. <sighs> you know, to be honest about it, a couple of days of walking around an assembly line this large, and this is like well, paradise redefined. Feels good to sit down, and to sit down in luxury of this level, gotta tell you, I wouldn't mind this any time of day. 
Real quickly, just want to go over a couple of key details in here because when I look at the growth of what these interiors have, well, refined themselves into, it really blows me away. These trucks are no longer a bench seat and a buckboard ride. They really are about making the end user, whether it's an office or a family just getting out and away with this thing, well, a lot more comfortable. Now, real quickly, they refer to this as a two-tone modular dashboard layout, and if you look at it, that makes a lot of sense. Very attractive. This one has the wood graining and obviously the offset beige color. But if you look at the execution of detail, like the bezels around the HVAC, which, by the way, has also been redesigned to make the interior more quiet, and of course, they've gone thicker in side glass. They're using quiet steel and a lot of sound deadening throughout the interior to really bring this interior DB down to what darn near living room levels. And of course, instrumentation, I'm a fan of that. And you'll see this bezel design tie into the actual tachometer and speedometer and great use of gauges. A lot more information coming off of this engine and powertrain system than you would normally see. And in fact, in the Power Stroke Diesel, this even includes an hour meter, which from a maintenance perspective is awesome stuff. Now, optional features. Of course, an integrated trailer brake controller, I'm a huge fan of this, and it's been improved ergonomically, and this one's expanded to include the optional upfitter switches. So if you put clearance lights or driving lights or whatever options you want, literally have these switches already wired in, makes them a lot easier to plug into. Now, if you're one that thinks that maybe that's not an option worth getting, you're certainly welcome to go down to your local auto parts store, and of course, it will, in fact, permit you to wire in your own trailer brake controller, but I got to tell you, having this thing already in dash, I think is the way to go. Other key operational issues, certainly a center console that's not just here to be an armrest, but actually is a portable office in that it allows hanging folders for filing system, it has a PowerPoint and the ability to hide away your laptop, and a cell phone as well. Again, addressing different uses. Love the size of the cup holders and, of course, a number of them. Other optional features, of course, is the rear seat entertainment DVD system. Now, this is available on most of the crew cab models. Of course, that'll make that right and back there a lot more pleasant as well. Heated seats, of course, you come to expect that. An audio system that gives you backup controls right here on the steering wheel. Well, you get a sense of it in a real hurry. We've got a lot more to talk about, and as much as I actually hate to leave this interior, I'm going to go on back now. Okay, last couple of details. I just want to remind you again about these headlights because I really like the thought process behind it. Ford decided to bring this driving light down lower. This is the principal lamp for driving. They did this because they wanted it to be less of a distraction to oncoming drivers. Pretty smart thinking. They also lowered the frame rails down seven inches and mounted the bumper there. They did this to lower the rate of override in case of an accident. Again, I like that thought process. Now, if you've been with us through this whole process, I mean, it's been pretty amazing. The sophistication of the plant, obviously the sophisticated hardware that goes in this vehicle, and the craftsmanship has just been amazing. And I think we've done a pretty good job of conveying that for you. The thing that you had to be here for, however, and the thing that really pleased us most is when we saw the amount of pride that went in this vehicle. We never went to one workstation where everyone wasn't worried about every nut and bolt. I mean, you got to give it to the American worker. They build the best truck in the world, and they are part of the built Ford Tough story. Thanks for joining us.